a letter arrives in the mail with news of a strange and lucrative inheritance. The letter goes on to say, if I got a letter like this, I would think it to be a scam. And I was like, why are we named? Somebody's scamming us. So is it a scam? I said, you know, Ray, there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. He said, yeah, and he said, I cross that two or three times a day. Who is this mysterious benefactor? He's a hidden man. He didn't have the family life. He didn't have a friend to talk to. He really, truly was a fan. But an inheritance? That's a strange inheritance and a stranger story still. I'm Jamie Colby, and today I'm on old Route 66 in central Illinois. I'm heading to the small farming town of Lincoln, where the strangest of inheritance stories unfolded. On a Monday morning in July 2012, farmer Bob Ferris heads out to mow hay on some land he leases from an old friend named Ray Falk. And it was very uncommon for Ray not to come out and talk to me. And then I smelled something. I happened to look over and the bin door was open and that was not a good sign. I just went over there and then I found him. And then I called 911 and... The county coroner, acting on info from a neighbor, contacts attorney Don Bailey to inform him his 71-year-old client has died of heart failure. Bailey cannot even remember Falk. I haven't seen him in 15 years. And so I have no idea who they're talking about. How strange is it that we're here right now talking to you about this guy you barely remember? <laughs> it's very strange. Don checks his files and realizes he indeed worked with someone named Ray Falk back in 1997. He wanted me to change his will and he brought it in to me and I was named as the executor. But all I had was a copy. It was 15 years later he could have changed his will. Don drives out to Ray's farmhouse to find the original will. There, he discovers an unsettling scene. It was absolutely covered with cobwebs and would remind you of a show where you'd have Dracula involved. I mean, my house might sometimes be untidy. <laughs> Are we talking about more than that? We're talking about a hoarder show. The whole place reeked. Somehow, the lawyer locates Ray Falk's will. It directs $5,000 to a Chicago animal shelter, but the next part is a puzzle. I give to bequeath all my tangible personal property to my friends, Kevin M. Brophy of San Fernando, California, and Peter Barton of Valley Stream, Long Island, New York. Who are these guys, and how does Don find them? That will take more digging, digging through the debris. In Ray's room, he had pictures of wolves, um, torn out of magazines and put on the wall. I had no idea how it all fit together at that point in time. He'll start to fit it all together soon. Among Ray's many diaries written in neat cursive, Don finds a scrapbook with a big clue. It said Lucan. I opened it up and uh, it had Kevin's picture in there. Lucan was a TV series starring Kevin Brophy as a boy raised by wolves. It was canceled after just 12 episodes in 1978 when Ray Folk was 37 years old. It's pretty clear to me that show meant something to Ray and he identified with it. Don digs further and discovers the other man in the will, Peter Barton, also an actor. Why Folk named him, however, is a bigger riddle. From 1988 to 92, Barton played Dr. Scott Granger in the soap opera The Young and the Restless. Before that, he starred in a short-lived TV series called The Powers of Matthew Starr. Two basically unknown actors that Ray had a fondness for. Did you have any idea how much they were going to inherit? The inheritance consisted of approximately 165 acres, some CDs that were at the bank, and the cash that I found around the house. How much is it all worth? Don's not exactly sure, but figures hundreds of thousands of dollars easy, maybe even a million or more. So the dutiful attorney writes letters to the two retired actors 
informing them of their very strange inheritance. He has named you as his friends, beneficiaries of his estate. I was stunned. I was shocked. I took the other side of it completely going, Kevin, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. That's next. But first, our strange inheritance quiz question. Which strange personality willed that a seance be held for him every year? Was it Master of the Macabre, Edgar Allan Poe? Escape artist, Harry Houdini? Or horror film icon, Vincent Price? The answer in a moment. 